shuttle control Houston. Uh, that was mission specialist Sally Ride uh, comparing her flight to uh, Disneyland. I wish that there had been another woman on my flight. I wish that two of us had gone up together. Mm -hmm. I think it would have been a lot easier. It's tough to be the first, but you've done it with incredible grace. You also have the only job in the world that everybody understands. <laughs> my father, I think, was so grateful when I became an astronaut because he did not understand astrophysicist. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't relate to that at all, but astronaut was something he thought he But understood. astronaut, and you could see people all over the world connecting with what you were doing. Roughly half the people in the world would love to be astronauts, would give anything to trade places with you, and the other half just can't understand why in the world you would do something <laughs> that stupid. If you don't have 20-20 vision, can you become an astronaut candidate? I always thought that was a big disabling factor. I think it used to be. Now, as long as it's correctable to 20-20, it's okay. So you'd probably qualify. <laughs> I didn't have any dreams about being an astronaut at all. And I, I don't understand that because uh, as soon as the opportunity was open to me, I jumped at it and I instantly realized that that was what I really wanted to do. I took all the science classes that I could all the way through junior high school and then into high school. I went to a girls' school that really didn't have a strong science program at all when I was there. At the time, it was a classic school for girls with a good tennis team and a good English teacher and essentially no math passed 11th grade and no physics and no chemistry. I'm curious about the reception that you got inside NASA. Well, what kind of thing happened to you? Really, the only bad moments in our training involved the press. The press was an added pressure on the flight for me, and whereas NASA appeared to be very enlightened about flying women astronauts, the press didn't appear to be. The things that they were concerned with were not the same things that I was concerned with. They For instance, the bathroom facilities. Bathroom facilities. How much did you get asked then? Just about every interview I got asked that. Everybody wanted to know about what kind of makeup I was taking up. They didn't care about how well prepared I was to operate the arm or deploy communication satellites. Did uh, NASA try to prepare you for the press and the pressure? <laughs> Unfortunately, no, they don't. You know, in my case, they took a graduate student in physics who had spent her life in the basement of a physics department with oscilloscopes and suddenly put me in front of the press. What do you suppose are the dumbest kinds of questions you've been asked to date? Without a doubt, I think the worst question that I have gotten was whether I cried when we got malfunctions in the simulator. <laughs> <laughs> no. That surpassed even the one about whether you're going to wear a bra or not? Did that, somebody really ask you that? No. The press, I think, decided that that was a good question for someone to have asked me and for me to have answered, but I never got that and question. They made up your, they made you up quite a good response. Something about, in a state of weightlessness, it doesn't matter? Yeah, I think they it made was up this whole it thing? was something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was never asked that question. What about your feelings during the launch? Was there any time that the enormity of what was going on came over you? The moment of the launch, when the engines actually ignited and the solid rockets lit, everyone on the crew was, for a few seconds, just overcome with what was about to happen to us. But a year of training is a long time. A year of sitting in simulators and being told exactly what's going to happen, and you hear the sounds and you feel the vibrations, and they prepare you very well, and it, it worked. We were able to overcome being overcome and do the things that we were supposed to do. Just watching there at the launch, there were people with tears streaming down their faces. People I never would have expected. And yet they were all very moved by, I guess, the human audacity of it. You know? I think that to imagine when you see the, the long trail of flame and then imagine that there are really people <laughs> inside that, that's really something. Inside, of course, you don't see the long trail of flame, and what you're feeling is, is really more of an exhilaration. Well, there are lots of people looking up there feeling proud, not only of you up there, but also on the ground. Thank you. Thank you. This special episode of Blank on Blank is made possible by Squarespace. Squarespace is an easy way to create a website, blog, or online store for you and your ideas. Try Squarespace at squarespace.com forward slash blank on blank for a special offer.
What do, what do you think it might be like in uh, 2001, in fact? What's possible for us? Well, 2001 is a long ways in the future to speculate on. <laughs> but probably the next step after the space shuttle is going to be a space station. I would foresee a space station as being not just something that is orbiting the Earth and used for experimentation or, or whatever, but would also be used as a launching platform back to the moon or to Mars. Mm -hmm. And I think that both of those are inevitable. I'm sure we'll go back to the moon. I'm sure we'll, it's only a matter of time before we send people to Mars. But do you have any down. speculation about uh, how, how long it might be, perhaps, uh, before there are such things as peopled uh, space colonies? I'd guess that probably by the year 2000 there will be. I think that we'll have a space station up by the end of this decade. On which it would be possible to live for long periods of time. Yes. This episode was also supported by the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, enhancing public understanding of science, technology, and economic performance. More information on Sloan at sloan.org.